welcome to another episode of Superpower Review, the show that brings you news and reviews on comic book things. Today, we're going to be going over the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Volume 3, a book that came out a couple of weeks ago. A little behind on comic book reviews, but I'm catching up. And uh, to help me do this episode, I got my best friend, Jake Burnell, with me. What's going on, buddy? What's going on? It's been a while, man. It has. I miss you. That's fine. <laughs> Um, so this book came out recently. This is the third volume of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And as you guys know that uh, I, I've i always shared my love and interest to the, to these books, and including this guy who absolutely loves the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So with that being said, uh, Jake, what did you think about this book? I love the mashup. This one like went full-fledged mashup, and it was fantastic. Yeah, it's uh, that's probably one of my favorite parts. So it's just mashups. Uh, the mashups are really cool, but uh, just a little quick introduction into the book. Oh. By the way, spoiler review, okay? This yep. is always spoiler reviews on Superpower Review. Um, <laughs> uh, so pretty much we, we have like this uh, multiverse going thing going on. Um, Batman kind of knows that something is not right, and but he's not sure why. And uh, But pretty much what you said, the, this, the, the thing that did it for me with this book was the mashups, for mm -hmm. sure. Oh, we, yeah. We got Killer Croc, and well, we got Rocksteady and Bebop as... Clayface and Killer Croc, which yep. is really cool. I really like that mashup. <laughs> I, did, I didn't know what was going on for a second. Yeah, yeah. right. You, you're kind of confused. You're like, what's going on? Um, I don't think Batman is necessarily a mashup, but his suit definitely looks bit, uh, different. More Japanese-like. Yes. Yeah. To the... um, we don't have a Foot Clan, but we have the Smile Clan, and Joker's pretty much the Shredder. Yep. And then the turtles. We got the turtles. We got um, the Red Hood. The Raphael. Red Hood. I saw that and I just lost my shit. <laughs> Raphael I thought it was the great. Red Hood. Uh, we got Michelangelo as Damian Wayne, which is kind of like not the most accurate uh, mashup, yeah. I don't think. I think but... it was the colors they were going for. Yeah, probably. Um, then you got what, Donatello as the Huntress. Uh, no, Donatello is the red... The re he's the Red Robin. Um, the my least favorite Robin. Oh, yeah. And then we got uh, Leo the, as Nightwing. Nightwing, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so uh, I definitely love the the mashups, and then we got um, Master Splinter as Alfred. Yeah, by the way. that That's blew my that. mind, dude. <laughs> so it's pretty cool how these like these worlds. Okay, so Batman's world and the Turtles' world they coexist with with each other, and a little bit of a backstory. So pretty much, uh, Splinter. Uh, found Batman in the alleyway and you know the turtles and whatnot and they're they're brought up together and mm -hmm. they're like brothers yeah which is different it's it's a different twist on things and I like you know a different twist on things but I like that they didn't like spend too much time on it like they like a lot of books sometimes do on the origin story yeah there's like quick note next part Right. So that way you just don't have to waste your time. Because, I mean, it's great and all, but, like, the origin stories always take too long sometimes. Take yeah. up too much of a book. Yeah. So it's definitely a mystery. So we, you know, it's definitely going to take a little bit until we finally realize what's going on. Is this a six-part six series? You said it was seven, didn't you? No, that was for Batman and Laughs. Oh, and then, yeah, this is six. Yeah, this is six. I think they've all been six. Um, so it's been a really cool. So uh, obviously always awesome to see Freddie Williams doing the artwork for these books. You know, I, got, I just got to say that Freddie Williams is probably one of my favorite turtle uh, illustrators. And I could just watch Freddie Williams do the turtles like all the time. I think he's one of my favorite artists for the turtles. And we also have guest artist Kevin Eastman, who mm -hmm. is one of the co-creators of the turtles. Absolutely. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what this is going to go because honestly, the mashup just made this ten times better. Yeah. Um, after reading the first and second set, they were good. It kind of, by the second one, I felt like it was starting to run its course. But after reading this and checking out the, how they just threw everything together, it's not going to be like, oh, Batman's appearing here or the turtles appearing there. No, there's just like they're there. Yeah, so it's right. fantastic. Um, um, and then we got uh, what's his name? Tinian. What's his first name? Uh, we got uh, James Tinian. Who's been writing these books? Yep. So I, I really like the, um, I really like with uh, James Tinian's writing with uh, Freddie Williams are. I think mm -hmm. it goes well pretty well, and uh, with uh, with be with that being said, with uh, Kevin Eastman uh, art in in this book as well. What do you think is going on with that Raphael, that black and white Raphael? I think it's another universe that has found his way into the multiverse that we're reading. Yeah. And he knows something's up because he's like one of the OGs. Um, and honestly, I feel like if you remember from the first one when all the guys were put, coming together against the, the Turtles and Batman, yeah. 
they're going to do this. They're going to have a whole bunch of different versions of turtles from different multiverses and everything like that, and they're going to come and fight all at once. I think that's going to be fantastic. Mm. At least I hope so. Yeah, so uh, definitely interested to see what's in, in store for this series. Um, so another, th another big spoiler, too. Krang is the villain. Yep. And who's he dressed up as? Okay, so... I forgot his name. <laughs> Uh, he is in the suit, so obviously we know Krang like goes in like the stomach of like a suit. So that is the anti monitor, and That's I right. really don't know too much about the anti monitor to be quite honest. I don't either. Yeah. Um, so, but I wonder what Krang is up to. This is a uh, the story is kind of cool. The story is titled Crisis and a Half Shell. <laughs> Turtle power. <laughs> <laughs> what would you give this book for a grade? As it stands by itself, I'm gonna say. Um, I'd say 9.0 to 9.2. Nine, yeah, I, I'm going to 100% agree with you on that. I'm, I was going to give it a 9.2 to be, to be exact. Because you know what? Uh, the match the mashups are pretty cool. Um, but I have to say that, you know, if, if, if I didn't love this series so much, you know, if I, would just, uh, if I was new to comic books and I read this, then I would probably not pick up the other issues. But it's being a fan of this team up because this is like one of my favorite team ups mm -hmm. of all time. I absolutely love Batman and the Turtles together. Love it. But the, um, you know, I'm not saying it's bad. It's not bad at all. It's just that it, it doesn't really give me the, the hook that I'm looking for to make me continue to mm -hmm. read, reading them. You have to be invested in this somehow. You have to have some kind of knowledge. You have to have some kind of connection with the whole stories independently to have some kind of hook on this. Yeah. And that's what drove it home. Is It wasn't the story. It wasn't the fighting that really drew us in. It was the mashups. It was right. the first thing that we, like, I, I love the Red Hood. And I, I really, really thought it was cool that it came in. And, like, and then Alfred and Splinter and, like, so it's not even the stories themselves. Like I said, after the second one, I felt like the story played out, played itself out in a you know a respectful way, and but this one drew us in because of the mashups, not because of the story. The story was going to be the same thing again if they didn't. Right. It's going to be Batman and Ninja Turtles. All right. Yeah. Fantastic. Like, you know, what are they going to put all that hat this time? Exactly. So, um, that's that's definitely that's definitely one one of the things I love about, it, of course, is the mashups. But you know, seeing uh, Alfred as uh, Splinter is really cool, and I, I I think that that whole twist of the origin story is is really cool. And it, it, just again, the mashups. But um, I really did enjoy the action that was in this book yes. as well. I thought it was really good. So the artwork is good. You know, story is pretty good. It, it's just you know, it was. Um, other besides the, the the other two first issues, mm -hmm. those got me like, yes, game on, let's go. This one was like, this one was a read, and I put it down. And I was like, yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So it, it it definitely had didn't have the same excitement factor as the other two, if if that makes sense. Yeah. But uh, anywho, this is a it was a good book. Um, I, I recommend it, obviously, if you're, if you're a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan and a Batman fan. Again, like I said, this is the book that I love this team up. And I know I say this on the channel a lot, uh, especially when I'm on, at home, but this is the team up that got me back into collecting books. <laughs> it really is. And um, I'm going to blame my boss, too, who is our technical director in the show, who... Uh, who told me about the comic book store that that was down the street and I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to go check it out. And this is like during the time where I was like taking a break from books. I haven't been collecting since like mm -hmm. high school. And I went there and I remember seeing the owner and he's like, oh, hey, how are you doing? Uh, have you ever been here before? And I was like, no, but this place is dangerous. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so ever since then I have uh, been deemed doomed. So uh, I think that um, that gives us uh, the review of the book uh, so far. Uh, the, the show's not over yet. Uh, I, it comes to my understanding that you got a really cool mail call oh, yeah, from oh, CGC. Yeah. And yeah, gifts. Yeah, so, let's, uh, so since we have some time, let's check those out. So, so. You, these are the books that you got signed at Rhode Island Comic Con. Yep, by the Kevin Eastman. Um, guy was great. Uh, everybody who worked with him was fantastic. Or, you know, I was I, I ended up going there on a Friday. I believe you and I went on a Saturday. Yes. And um, 
I scoped the place out kind of ahead of time to kind of check out what was going on. Um, and the lady remembered my name out of the hundreds of people that were going to be there. She remembered my name and everything like that. And she goes, all right, here we go. I was like, me and Kevin, you know, beat feet up to the line so we can uh, get there first. And it was great. They had a whole bunch of selection for things to choose. If you didn't have anything you wanted to get signed, but you wanted something done, they yeah, were more cool. than happy to um, sketches, anything like that. Everything, um, their, his first signature was free, which is awesome. a, a, it's astounding to begin with, just because of the fact that um, artists don't do free signatures. Not it's, as often as you'd think. No. no. It's um, very rare. Kevin Eastman has such a huge following that he can guarantee he's going to make money on every single person, no matter if he gives out a free signature. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's really great. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a huge thank you for any artist who will sign anything mm -hmm. for you for free. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, it's a huge help because, as you know, these Comic Cons are a huge money pit, so... So, so what'd you get? So first things first, a Batman Ninja Turtles Take those team up out of the bag. <laughs> I got the Kevin Eastman variant <laughs> signed. Came back in nine point six. I was definitely hoping for a nine point eight. I know, I know, but, you were, I know you're looking for that nine point. And you know what? It, it, it should, so it's it's one of those newer books that should have been a nine point. Uh, tilt it more this way so they can see the signature. Yeah, oh, it's it's there you go. Oh, yeah, now we got go. clear, but you, you get the point. There it is. Uh, if you're a fan of Matina, mm. here's another piece that I got. Sweet. So that's a that's a really cool cover. Yeah, it's the Virgin art from Martina. Um, you know, is his take on uh, issue number eighty. Um, it's fantastic. I love the work. I love his representation. It's very lifelike for the turtles. Kind it of really feel. is. I feel and like they gave it more of a grim feel. Like yes, he, like, it's usually his art style. Yeah. Um, which, I really love Matina's art, but I really hate all the the flack about him uh, that he's been getting lately about copying. And and he yeah. uh, the evidence shows that it, it looks pretty. True. And he's gonna deter me. I'm still gonna buy his work. Yeah. I mean, there are <laughs> there are parts that are still really, really good. Um, even ones that aren't copied. So um, here, this, this one's my favorite. One because he got this for me for my birthday actually one day one year. I was at uh, Providence Comic Con. <laughs> um, this went for fifty bucks, and I got this signed. Is that how much we paid for it? Fifty. Yeah, came back fantastic. He originally yeah. wanted sixty, and I like. Oh yeah, we talked him right. down. So um, Kevin Eastman saw this. He thought it was fantastic, really good condition. They mentioned everything mm. like that, and he threw a nice Casey Jones like a little sketch on there. That's um, so cool. That's my favorite. Yeah, um, I love. I read this book. I loved it. This is fantastic. The um, the back art on this is fan is amazing. Um, yeah, so it's turning around. Yeah. So. Because I do, then, I do really like the black back art too. Look at that. Look how cool that is. I love the reds in this in this yeah, book. Yeah, and the entire book is you know is in the same style. Now you got this book uh, pressed and cleaned, and I did. I, I wonder how much it benefited this book. Oh yeah, because I think I think when um, when we had it raw, I said I think this this book would maybe be an easy like eight point five to nine point zero. Yeah, absolutely. I remember those that conversation. Yeah, so it came back nine point two. If you didn't see, and. Um, took forever to get the book back, but I mean it was definitely worth it. Did it did take definitely these books did take it. a long time. They um, really did. And I'm not sure how much it saved it, but I'm glad it did. I mean, like, you know, those, bo those books are really hard to keep, man, because, you know, they, it, no one really thought that these books were going to be probably oh, worth something not. back then. It was 1985 that was made. Yeah. I mean, it was. It's, if, if it's not, you know, if it's not, I mean, if it's not DC, if it's not Marvel, people are just like, yeah, it's Turtles books. You books know, back almost in then. 40 years old. Exactly. And plus, those books, uh, the black covers they're so hard to keep up with mm -hmm. they really are they're so hard to, yep. to keep in good shape all right this one this, this is one the, just blows my mind this is the piece of the resistance so <laughs> we were in boston comic-con yes and we picked this up well we were so on the side booth i think it was a friday no it was, it was, sunday. It was sunday no sunday. we went on a saturday because it was busy it was busy. i thought we went on i sunday took the day off from work like for that like best deals but okay because i think it would have been gone by then um so he wanted a hundred dollars. That was a price tag. I talked. I threw eighty bucks out the front offer right off the bat, and he said sold. I was like done. 
Uh, I almost walked away from it before we even like threw an offer out there, and you're like, it's gonna be gone. I was like, dude, you we need literally, to go. We literally made it like 20 yeah. feet, and we turned around. I was and like, dude, you need to go pick that thing up right now because that thing will be gone. It will not be there. So this is a first edition. So beautiful. Third printing of Ninja Turtles. My heart. Um, came back 9.6, yeah. which is phenomenal. Um, so yeah. we got this for 80 bucks. Yeah. And I was a retail for these days. Uh, so this book ha took a tremendous jump in price. So um, these books are going from anywhere for like 300 to 350 dollars right now. In the loose, 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 exactly. Uh, raw. So. You made out like a bandit, my oh, yeah. friend. I've been looking online um, for a 9.6 uh, value. Um, they're going from anywhere from $600 to $1,000. Yep. So um, the third printing is becoming the new up-and-coming collector item because the first and second were such so small runs. Yeah. And they're so expensive now. Uh, first printing, first... Uh, I think it just first, goes for about twenty seven thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, Trust me, I know. Yeah, I've looked. <laughs> and then the second printing goes for about twelve. I think the third printing is going up in price so much more because the second printing is getting so much harder to find. Oh, absolutely. Especially in good condition. I give me that. I gotta look <laughs> at this thing one more time. I can't believe this thing came back at nine point six. I think out of all of them that you got pressed and cleaned. I think this one probably benefited the most out of a press and Oh, clean. absolutely. Yeah. Pfft, look at that. I can't believe I'm even holding this in my hands. This so is... the next step is to get the other signature by uh, Peter Laird. Yeah. And uh, get it repressed. Yeah, I was just looking at that myself. Yeah, I can't believe that because you know what? The newer cases have this, the labels inside. Yeah. Yeah. That's Maybe they... On the, on the magazine cases, magazine they probably case. don't have a spot for it. But... And you know what? I just have to also point out too, what a great uh, signature placement from the for the Eastman signature, and I love the color. I, yep. I do. It, as you, as as I've said many times too, is that I love a metallic color on on a book. For you uh, collectors out there, yeah. um, if you notice, you see the T right here. You got this little bit of blood. That's a small difference that between a third. And the second and first printing. Yeah. First and second will not have this blood splatter in the T. It only stay in the last three letters. Um, so if you're ever hunting out there, keep that in mind when someone's trying to push a, a third edition on you for you know a second of price or a first edition price. Now there's a fourth printing on this book, right? It and is, but with a different with cover. With a different cover. So it's completely night and day. Yeah. Uh, there's no way someone can get you on that unless you lack of knowledge. I can't believe you got this thing for eighty bucks. I know. I can't believe he was even selling it for a hundred dollars. Because maybe he didn't notice then that there was a price jump on that book already. Oh, I don't think so at that time. It was just month right, just before, few months before the price you're jump. You're freaking lucky, man. Man. You are lucky. I want to say that book came out of a press. I guarantee, like, I want to say this book was probably in a graded sleeve and someone cracked it for whatever reason. I feel like it was cracked. That'd be stupid. Exactly. <laughs> but I mean, I feel like that's what it was. Like it. How how else would it stay in such good condition? Like yeah, a bag and a board. But I mean, I don't know. I don't know. What, what does it say? It says. Uh, like I said, I really feel like that the press and clean really benefited that book for sure. I really do because I, I think I think my guesstimate for that book was like a nine two. Yeah. When I was looking, I mean, hey, I'm no professional. Nine point eight, but I mean, like, you know, but, you take everything with a grain of salt. Yeah, right. But, but I mean, I kind of like ballparked it, you know. What it, it usually says, and it, has, it says white pages. Yeah, that's big too. Like that's the big thing. Like that's that. why I was saying that it had to have been in, because I mean, the Casey Jones uh, Raph number one is off white. Yeah, and that's still actually not that bad for that no, book. No, absolutely, and that's what I'm saying. Um, and it's just, I feel like it was. In, it gives no way. I feel like it was inside some kind of protective casing more than a bag and a board. I don't know. So, But it is a 9.6 now, and congratulations, man. Thank you. I hope right. in 30 years it's 27 grand. <laughs> <laughs> and you would still sell it then? God, no. Unless I can get a first or second. <laughs> hey, maybe, maybe you can sell that one day for a second print. That's the only way that would leave. Yeah. First or second, guaranteed 9.4 or higher. Yeah. I know somebody uh, that I worked with who has a second printing of that book. Yeah, what's the grading on it? I don't know. I mean, uh, I think he has. He's he's had them since he was in college, but 
Yeah, I don't know. He said, I, I remember when he used to tell me that he had those books, that he said they're probably not in the best shape now, but mm. I don't know. Well, cool books, man. Thank uh, you. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for today's episode. Make sure you give this video a like if you liked anything that Jake and I had to say about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Volume 3, or if you really liked his books that he got in CGC, give the video a like. I want to say uh, thank you to all the new subscribers to the channel. Uh, if you have some spare time, watch some videos. And I wanted to also thank the uh, continuing subscribers who show love to the channel. So that's going to do it for today's episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.